All right. Hi there, MTG Ontario. This is uh, Fam here again for another M12 limited video, and this time we had a draft. Uh, let's just get right into it. Okay, so in this pack, we got um, Garrick's Horde, Hunter's Insight, which is you draw a card after your creature deals damage. Um, not too bad, I guess. It's a card advantage for green. Uh, Arachnus Web and the Garrick's Companion. Those are a lot of green cards. What else do we have that's not green? We got um, Gorehorn Minotaurs, which is actually a really good uh, red card. Uh, Dusk Hunter Bat, which is actually a pretty decent bat if you if you go for like sort of the aggressive black strategy. Uh, Blood Ogre is also another decent red creature, but the card that stands out the most here to me is Aether Adept. Not only is it the only blue card, giving or the only decent blue card I think in this pack. I mean Levitation is okay and all, but I I think you take Aether Adept over it any day. But the rest of this pack doesn't have much in ways of blue uh, or black actually or white even. It's mostly green and red, uh, a little bit of black with the Dust Hunter Bat, but I think taking the Aether Adept here is safe, and it's most likely that doing this will prevent the person to your left being in the same color as you. So I'll take that, and moving on. Uh, World Slayer, I don't think I've ever seen this card played in anyone's main deck ever since it was printed, I think, was it Mirrodin Block? So uh, we're just going to ignore that for now. It's not a very good card, um, just because it costs way too much and it doesn't do a whole lot that you, like, I mean, it's a wrath that doesn't kill world slayer, but anyways. Uh, looking at this pack, uh, there's not much in ways of blue cards, unfortunately, so we can't really pair anything with that. I'm not sure how good zombie infestation is in this format because it is like you are two for wanting yourself to make like a zombie. So this is good in the late game if you get mana flooded, but I'm not going to prioritize taking that right here. Uh, Blood Rage Vampire isn't a, isn't that exciting. Distress is decent in terms of a black card. Dark Favor is okay, especially if you go with blue. Um, you get a bunch of flyers and you put and you just strap on the dark favors and you uh, go to town. But at the moment, there's not much in ways of cards that I really want to go. I think that I'm going to take the Rock Egg, even though it's kind of slightly a defensive card. But white pairs decently well with blue, and one of my best, my favorite strategies is blue white flyers. So um, going with that, looking at this pack, we don't have much in ways of um, hmm. Like, the only white card in this pack is a Griffin Sentinel. We got two blue counter spells. So, the blue and white cards aren't very exciting. Uh, Garrick Companion is not that exciting. The red cards aren't very good either. Um, there's a Giant Spider. So, I definitely think if I was going to go green, I'd go Giant Spider over Garrick's Companion at this point. But, um, I think that the most powerful card in this pack is the Grave Digger. Some people who drafted black a lot and love black in this format was telling me how good this 1-1 is because it really puts on the it puts the aggressive strategy exactly where it wants to be. They were even saying that they might even take it over Gravedigger. I'm not sure if I'm willing to go that far to say how good this card is. I think it's decent, but I don't think it's as good as Gravedigger. Gravedigger is such a strong card because it gets, it's so much card advantage just by itself. And I'm just going to take this one here. At worst case scenario, I could splash it, but I might actually still move into black here. Depends on what com what comes. Um, at this moment, um, all the blue cards here are either draw spells, and I've played with this before, and I actually have lost to this by myself because I couldn't kill my opponent fast enough, and I decked myself because um, my deck was too controlish and it was a little bit too slow in terms of tempo. So I ended up dying before I could kill my opponent because I was drawing way too many cards. Like at, once you get past four to five cards at a time. It becomes really scary um, at the point where you, if you can't kill your opponent at that point, it's really tough. And uh, anyways, so the other blue card here is Divination, but I'm not too excited about taking it here at this point. I'm actually going to look and pick up this Assault Griffin. It goes well. We could go, we still could stay in the blue-white plan here, even though we're passing a bunch of blue cards. But the Grave Digger is fine. We could. I, I kind of don't want to end up white-black, but we'll see how things go. Um. Okay, let's see here. So we have the Griffin Rider, which is decent, but I'm not sure if I want to pick it up right here, right now, just because um, I only have one Griffin, and maybe if I had like a couple of Griffins and I pick one of these guys up later in like the second or third pack, I'd consider it, but um, I'm a little worried to see like how many Giant Spiders are going around, but I think the sa the the sorry the ship has sailed on green cards, so uh, we passed up all our green cards at this point, so... I don't see ourselves taking any green cards in the moment. So I think the pick is here is between, uh, and there's also, sorry, a Devouring Swarm. And there's also a Mana Leak in blue. So I think that we have to want to, we want to pick what our second color is. It's I think it's either going to be blue or black, 
I'm going to try and go for the devouring swarm here. See how like a black white strategy goes. I'm not a big fan of um, black white in particular, just because the mana ends up pretty goofy and you usually have some mana problems here or there, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't really, I didn't see really um, many good cards in blue up to this point other than our first pick Aether Adept. So I'm willing to put that aside at the moment. Um, that being said, I'm not, I see a mana leak here, but then we passed the two mana leaks already and a cancel divination and that six mana draw spell card there, the enchantment. So, um, whoever wants to play blue can have a bunch of counter spells, but, uh, I think that we're going to try and go black here. And then the Soren Sturse is a fine card. Um, yeah, there's nothing too much to note here. There's a lurking crocodile, but otherwise there's not much else in that pack. Uh, this pack doesn't have a whole lot for us. Oh wait, there's a Drifting Shade and a Child of Night. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. If we want our deck to be a little bit more black or a little bit more white. Considering the two white cards that we have right now, we might even still scrap them depending on like if we open like, I don't know, Frost Titan or something, we might still go blue here. But um, Drifting Shade I think is the more powerful card. Child of Night's the better tempo card. Um, I think that I, I usually see Drifting Shades go late just because it's a big black commitment. So I'm actually going to try and pick up the Child of Night here and see if I can wheel another, or I can get a Drifting Shade later in the draft. It might be incorrect, but I, I really like to go for tempo-oriented builds. And something like um, something like Drifting Shade, it's good, but I don't want to have too many later, later in my deck. Maybe one or two at best. So I think I'm, I'm confident that I can pick up one later if I end the point black, so... Um, at this point, you have a pick between Armored Warhorse, Honored the Pure, and Dark Favor. Considering our deck is mostly black now, we have two double black cards already. I'm not looking at the Armored Warhorse at all. And that being said, Honor the Pure probably is not going to be a big pick on my list either. So I'm going to go with the Dark Favor here, since it's pretty decent with any Flyer or any Invasion creature. And if you put it on Child Knight, it's still amazing too. So uh, this is our pack that we opened and came back to us. Um, I'm not really excited about anything here. The... Hunter's Insight, it's not that exciting, and you could probably just get yourself two for one if you're not careful, so I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm just going to take out the best card in the pack, which is the Garrick's Companion, and that could cause us some grief. Uh, seeing the Distress come back at this point is pretty uh, good. It's a pretty good sign for us. Uh, we could also think about taking the Mighty Leap here, but considering that like we have only a couple of white cards, I actually try to commit more in black here, try to cut off black as much as I can, and then maybe uh, pick up something else um, later and then commit to a different color afterwards. So, um, this pack is not exciting at all. Um, Scramble Burst doesn't actually do anything. Lightning Elemental doesn't do it. Well, it's a 4-1, it's fine, but I'll take a Goblin Grenade and someone wants to piece together the Goblin deck. And uh, that's code for I don't have enough Goblin Grenades in my collection yet, so. <laughs> um, this pack, not that exciting. I'll take a Demystify if I end up being white to be some sideboard card. Uh, same thing with Flash Freeze if I ended up being blue. Uh, it's a good sideboard card. I might, you might even main deck, it all depends. Uh, uh, someone passed me the last pick, Demon's Horn. Alright, so I guess I can, I can go mono black with the life gain. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're not really committed to white or blue at this point. We got three, we got three cards in, the non, in non black, so uh, we'll see what comes up. I also have a Garrick's Companion on the side. Actually, I'll just show all. Just remember what I have. I'm going to hide the grid though. Ooh, what does this guy do? Each player discards his or her hand and draws cards equal to the greatest number of the cards discarded this way. Uh, that's okay. I like this. This is pretty good. Um, yeah, there's not much else in this pack. There's a crowd of empires, which is fine, but it's kind of slow. I mean, as far as uh, icy manipulators go, it's uh, okay, but it's a little bit on the hefty side. Um... There's also this Griffin Rider, but we only have one Griffin still at this point. I think that we might be able to go green for this overrun. I don't know. I mean, there's nothing much in this pack for us. There's no real decent blue card unless, like, this is okay. I mean, this is fine as base stats, 3-mana 2-2 two, two already, and it can be a big, like, draw, draw engine, but um, I'm not sure how exactly how deep in blue we want to go for this card. Um, at the same time... Uh, and this could actually end up doing nothing in the late game, too, but I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try to go green for this overrun. If not, it's one waste to pick. And this pack really didn't have much that we're passing up on, so uh, I'll try it. Okay, so at this point, we're looking for green cards and black cards, and maybe splash something. Adaptive Automaton. How good is this? We got one vampire, and 
one zombie and one insect. Oh, that that's uh, that's awesome. So uh, I don't think adoptive automaton is exactly what we want. Mm, it's fine, anyways. The base stats is all right. I think troll hide is pretty sick though, and especially like if you assemble something like troll hide onto um, was it sacred wolf? Uh, you could really just like go to town with go to town on them just with that alone. So I'm gonna try to go for the troll hide here. Let's see here. So in this pack, we got another swarms, another grave digger, uh, stampeding rhino, smallpox. I think the pick here is, is the grave digger. Um, I kind of want some evasion, considering if we go green black, that there's not much in terms of evasion for these colors. Although we could just beef through our opponents and then just overrun them anyways. But uh, I, like I said before, grave digger is just a solid value. So um, in terms of creature quality, you can't really get much better than that for these colors. So. If we were to stay white, we could have ta taken uh, Gideon's Lawkeeper. If we went blue, we could have had the uh, Avon Fleetwing. But uh, I'm going to go black and keep keep on the course with the Gravedigger here. Uh, okay, so if we want to go green, we think it's Birds of Paradise, um, which is fine. It also helps us splash anything that we pick up later. Um, we could, again, we could stay white for the any of our the, the, the Salt Griffin or the Rock Egg, but I'm not really that tied into it right now. We shipped the blue cards already, so I don't think that we want to pick up the Skywinder. Uh, and uh, Master Thief. Frostbest is decent, but... So at this point, I think it just comes down to the Birds of Paradise or the Lurking Crocodile or the Zombie Goliath. I'm going to take the Birds of Paradise just because it's a decent card to get us tempo and it fixes for any splash that we might want. So we pick up like an Oblivion Ring or an Incinerate later, we can think about playing it. So I'm going to take that here over the Lurking Crocodile. Um... Okay, so this pack doesn't actually have too much for us to go on. In fact, it almost has nothing for us to go on. We got a Combust that we could splash, a Phantasmal Bear if we wanted to go blue, and at this point, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident I'm just going to hide blue because <coughs> the ship has sailed on that. I'm going to hide this Demon Horn. Um, the Fog could have for a sideboard card, and there's a Mighty Leap maybe that we want to play. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think that the most annoying card for us to have to deal with is Stave Off or Ice Cage, but Ice Cage is fine. So I'm just going to hate draft this Stave Off here. There's not much to, else that we could play here. So there's a Llanowar Elf, a Warpath Ghoul, a Runeclaw Bear, and an Onyx Mage for us. I'm not, I am not. played with the Onyx Mage before. It's fine, but I'm not that excited to have like two drops in our deck at that point. So I'm, I'm going to first of all like hide these white cards. And... Um, Let's see, cost sort. At the moment, we've got a couple of two-drop creatures. I think that something like Llanowar Elves will help us more. It's a, it's, a, it's a cheaper creature. It helps us get to our late game, and it benefits off Overrun uh, just as well as any other creature. So uh, I think Llanowar Elves is what exactly where a green deck wants to be anyway. So we'll take that there. Uh, Lurking Crocodile is a good thing to see here. But here's that uh, Drifting Shade that we were talking about before. Um, I think at this point that um, depending on how we want to go, like the lurk, the lurking crocodile is really decent value considering it's basically a three mana three three most of the time. And island walk is no joke. I've had like games just I've just seen people lose games because they could they couldn't deal with island walk because I think blue is one of the best colors in this format. And uh, so it really comes down to which creature I think is better: the drifting shade, or the lurking crocodile. Um, I'm gonna go on a limb and I'm gonna take the lurking crocodile here. The thing is, I just really love curve. Like, I, live, I really love prioritizing my curve over um, more powerful creatures, especially with something like Overrun in my deck. Because when you can just curve out to turn 5 and Overrun them, it's pretty much just game over. So that being said, this, de this pack has a Rusted Sentinel, which is decent. You know, 4 mana, 3, 4 is all right. Uh, can't block for a turn, but it's all good. Uh, Resembling Skeleton is decent, especially with Devouring Swarm. It's all good. But Ring Flesh, I think, is a really, really good removal spell, and it's a really good combat trick at worst, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to pick it up here. Ramping Growth is also really good too, uh, especially if you want to splash anything, but we still have the birds, and we don't really need to splash anything right now. At the mo And again, this come, uh, this was the pack I think we opened. We got the Ramping Growth, Titanic Growth b er, back, and Mind Rot. Um, I really like all three of those cards, but considering we have nothing to splash here, I'm not going to really consider the Ramping Growth at the moment. So it's between Titanic Growth and Mind Rot, and I think Titanic Growth is a better uh, trick for us. Mind Rot's a very solid card, but for pl for non-black players, those like even players who are their secondary colors in black, they might not really consider Mind Rot that much. 
So a card like that might come around later again. Uh, this pack doesn't have too much in ways. So Zombie Goliath is a card, so I, we're lacking a little bit in the creature department. So I'll, I'll take that. It's not a big deal. Hopefully we can pick up better creatures in our colors, though. Like green should have a lot better five drops in this, though. Uh, Smallpox is the only card for us here. I'm not too worried about Fling. I mean, I, we could lose to it, but I'm not sure how playable Smallpox is. I actually haven't played it in Limited ever, ever since it was printed, actually. But uh, maybe I'll play it today. You know, we'll see. Uh, what does this do? Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to take this fog, I guess. Oh, Room Claw Bears came back. All right, that's fine. So our curve is... Uh, Working out nicely. So I think now we can sort of focus on a little bit the top end of our curve. Uh, I would like to pick up some more removal if possible. All, all, the, all we have right now is a, uh, I guess if you count small pox, I'm going to small pox, um, Soren's Thirst, and Ring Flash. We need a little bit more to work with, but uh, we'll see. All right, so Visions from Beyond is exactly not, or well, we're not in blue, so. Um, let's see, there's a smallpox, the Rachnus Web, which is a decent removal spell, like pseudo removal spell for green. Uh, Land War Owls, which I talked before, is a premium card for green decks because they really just profit off, like, early mana since their creatures are so overpowered, um, even though they're just ground and pound creatures. Uh, Warpath Ghoul is mediocre, but Vampire Outcast, I think, is very unfair if you can ever get it bloodthirsted. Even if you can't bloodthirst it, it's fine, it's not the worst, but... If you bloodthirst it, this guy can just really turn the game around by himself. Um, also note there's a, another Dark Favor, but I expect something here to wheel from us. I'm not exactly sure what. Maybe a Distress, maybe the Dark Favor, maybe the Warpath Rule. I'm fine with any of those coming back. So uh, if we're lucky, maybe the Arachnus Web. But I'm taking the Outcast here and then uh, see what comes back later. All right, so in this pack, we got the uh, we got Child of Night, we got Garrick's Companion. The Scepter of Empires, actually, I didn't think it was that good before, but considering, like, there's so many, like, blood, uh, bloodthirst type of archetypes, this card's actually really good to get you there. Um, and then there's another bloodthirsted guy, which is reasonable. Um, there's a Rune Claw Bear. I'm not really too excited about those creatures. So I think it's between the Child of Night and the Garrox Companion. Uh, I'm just going to take a look at our colors. Wait, sort by color sort. Here we go. Got a little bit more black than green. But considering we have triple green, double green here, uh, it's kind of weird. We're probably not going to end up playing the smallpox, or maybe the distress even, so that, that might get cut out. But I really do like Garrick's Companions over Child of Knights, just because they're just a more solid body, and Child of Knights feels like it gets run over by Ring Flesh all the time, or they just can die to everything. So the Life Link is nice and all, but I think the Garrick's Companion will do us better. Oops, yeah, there you go. Um, okay. So here's an awkward pick for us. I really want the Sacred Wolf, considering we have a Troll Hide already, but there's also a Giant Spider. So I'm in this pick, like, I think Giant Spider is probably one of the best wing creatures that has ever been in core sets, and that's why it's still in core sets today. And it's just been a staple, solid dude the entire way. So looking at this pack also, there's a Ring Flesh and a Death Mark. Um, I really want a creature at this point, because we only have 13, and um, the pack's, like, just almost to the midpoint of this pack already, so I'm a little bit worried about how many creatures we have, especially since we're trying to build around Overrun. So to me right now, I'm trying to think about Sacred Wolf versus Giant Spider. Um, I think that I'm not confident in how many other uh, enchant creatures we're going to get, so I'm going to take the Giant Spider here just because I think it's the safer pick. Um, if I had, like, one more one more thing to go on Sacred Wolf. Like we have we have a dark favor, but I, I like to take the card that I think is safer here. Uh I like to see this. We have a Soren's Thirst in this pack. Uh even though it is double green or sorry, double black, um I think we we're not gonna have to like run it out on turn two anyways. So we we're lacking the removal, so I'm fine with taking this here. Uh just quick scan of this pack. There's a Mayan Rot, which may or may not come back. And there's, I can't believe this Peregrine F Griffin is still here, though. This is one of my favorite white cards in this set. but uh, And I can't believe it's common. Because at this mana cost, maybe two power is not that good. But first strike's a big deal, I think. So, um, Yeah, there's nothing too exciting out of this pack. So maybe we'll wheel, uh, wheel, the, wheel the Grizzly Bear. <clears throat> um, okay, so now we got our Sacred Wolf that came back. And there's also a Stampeding Rhino. At this point, I don't, I'm not too worried about like top-heavy cards. Because... Considering we took um, 
a giant spider, even though it's not really top heavy, it's like sort of a mid range card. I'm fine with taking the Sacred Wolf here because we passed up on an opportunity before. Uh, there's an Onyx Mage in this pack, but we're fine for two drops, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, take the Sacred Wolf here. Um, this pack doesn't have too much to go on. There's a Sutured Ghoul, which is like almost does nothing in this format. There's a Brink of Disaster, which is okay as well. Um, the rest of this pack is just blah. Uh, I think I could take the Brink of Disaster as like a sideboard card against Merfolk Looter, I guess. Because Merfolk Looter is like the absolute stones in this format. It's just amazing. So I want to have an like innumerable amount of ways to kill it. So uh, this pack doesn't have too much to go on. I'm going to take a Naturalize for the sideboard because I feel like I'm not even going to play my first Distress. So I don't see why I'm going to take a second one. So um, nothing really in this pack other than a Distant Tomb and a Plummet. And so we have two Grave Keepers. I don't really need the Distant Tomb at this point. It could be a third Grave Digger, I guess, but that's a little bit overkill. I'm going to take the Plummet for the sideboard and then uh, move on. Wow, the Arachnus Web and the Land of War Elf tabled. So, um, I think that we're okay for creatures. I think that we want the removal spell just in case because we're not, we're not exactly sitting that pretty. Um, we still can't really deal with gigantic creatures. I mean, Arachnus Web will like deal with it for one turn, but then it'll fall off. Uh, I guess it's the Arachnus Web here because it's uh, we should be okay for creatures already. But seeing the Llanowar Elf came back, it, coming back is a little bit surprising. So uh, let's just take another look at what we have here. Right now we're sitting on. Um, 15-ish creatures, let's say if I cut this Distress, Smallpox, um, we actually have mostly, all, mostly all our creatures are spread out between the two colors. We have a couple of double black creatures, but not too many here. Um, we could consider taking a Diabolic Tutor here for the Overrun, I guess. I don't think we're going to find room for it though, but... Uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to find room for it. I don't know if I really care about any of these other cards, though. No, I don't really. Uh, I guess I'll take the Tutor. I could have taken the Gate to have less answers for our Overrun. But, uh, whatever. I mean, I guess this is fine. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to hide the Naturalized Napalmate. So, hmm. I guess this is a decent build for this deck. Oh wow, I cannot believe the Sacred Wolf came back too. There's a Sacred Wolf and the Zombie Infestation. Uh, I'm still pretty sure that the Sacred Wolf is a pick for us here. This Pandemonium card, I'm not sure how good it would be in our deck, like if we just splashed it. We have a Burst, but I don't think it's really, I, I don't want to ruin my mana base for a 6 mana card, which might not do anything, so yeah. I've heard it, I've heard like the horror stories of it being out and someone having like Pentavus the next turn or something like that. But um, otherwise, uh, I'm going to take the safer pick and just stay with two colors. So what we have here right now is not too bad. We've got a um, decent amount of creatures, and this Mind Rock came back? Wow, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I might be able to cut this Rune Claw Bear. Now we have 16 creatures. I don't think we even need this Rune Claw Bear. Maybe cut one of the Zombie Goliaths, actually, because it's on the top end of the curve, and I don't want to have too many of those. So uh, I could probably see this as a 24-card deck with um, 16 lands, considering we have a Birds and a Land War Elf. So we'll probably make it green-based and a little bit of the black. It's going to be a little bit hard for us to hit the Soren's Thirst right off the bat, but it should be fine. By the time we need it, it'll be there. The Devouring Swarm might be a little bit awkward, might not be able to get it on turn 3. But the Vampire Elf cast hopefully should be okay. The thing I like about this deck is the curve is really good. It has decent tricks like Ring Flesh and Titanic Growth. Even putting Dark Favor on like a Rune Claw Bear can be really devastating. Troll Hide or uh, Arachnus Web. So I think that we can just play the beat down with this deck. Um, this pack doesn't have anything. I'll just take the creature. So while we're waiting, I'm not really sure what else to talk about. Um, we, I, with the time of recording this, we have about like 
less than a week before I have to leave for uh, Grand Prix Shanghai. That'll be exciting. Um, I actually found a roommate for my hotel at the last minute uh, yesterday at was it yesterday yeah yesterday at F and M, and it turned, I just walked into my store. I talked to the local store owner. He's actually a judge and a friend of my friend uh, Edwin, who's actually the regional coordinator for China and the uh, the manager of Grand Prix Shanghai. And uh, he told me that he was going because Edwin uh, approved for him to go to Shanghai for the for the GP. So he's staying at the Judge Hotel. And one of his friends, uh, one of the local store employees there, is also going. So, and he he's obviously he wasn't a judge either. So he needed a room, and he actually had a room booked, but it was coincidentally in the same hotel. And considering I couldn't cancel mine, but he could cancel his, I had him cancel his, and now he's rooming with me. So uh, it looks like I'll have a friend in Shanghai to stay with, um, and I'll meet up with my other judge buddies there. So it should be fun. <laughs> Okay, just waiting on this to wrap up. Oh, I just realized someone actually disconnected from the draft, so that could be the reason why we're waiting so long. I actually don't know why it actually takes this long because the auto picker should pick for you when the time runs out, right? So why does it actually take this long? It just baffles me what, what's going on with the programming here unless everyone just lets their timer run out and then you get this sort of lag in between um, where the where the program is trying to resolve this auto picking. I, I'm really not sure what's going on. Okay, there we go. Time to deck build. So let's put everything into the deck that we think is gonna go in right away. Do 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 do. Not the plummet. Swimming claw bears maybe. All right. One zombie goliath for now. And uh, uh not the dialogue theater for right now. Chest grave digger grave digger. So this is 24 cards exactly, and I'm, let's see here. What I'm not playing with is the Distress, the Diabot Tutor, the Smallpox, and a second zombie, zombie Goliath. I'm fine with one Zombie Goliath, I don't really need those. We have a bunch of good sideboard cards here. Um, the Distress, the reason why I actually like Distress, maybe more than other people, is because I look at it as a reactive, um, sorry, a proactive, Cancel basically. It'll take the best card out of their hand right away. It, gets, it lets you have something to do on turn two if you didn't already. It usually will get decent value, and you don't have to hold mana back like cancel because it's proactive instead of reactive. But anyways, um, I don't think that we can fit it just because it's a heavy color commitment and it doesn't affect the board right away. And anyways, there's a number of reasons why, and I think that in this deck would probably favor a creature heavier build anyways. And if this was a Doomblade, obviously I'd play it because that is much better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's not exactly removal, but it's very much like cancel, how I think of it. Um, just sorting out things by cost here. I'm sorry, by type. I'm not 100% on the dark favor right now, but considering we have two sacred wolves, I just want stuff for them to wear. So the dark favor can also be decent on devouring swarms, for example, as well. Or even on uh, Garrick Companion early, it can be like a huge beating. So, oh, I forgot the Ring Flesh. So right now we're looking at 15 creatures. Um, a really good curve, actually. We have two one-drops, which both are mana-producing creatures. We'll just help us get into our three drops very quickly. Um, and we can just drop off on our opponent with uh, a lot of creatures and then overrun them. All right, the overrun is supposed to be over here. So I think that this is a pretty decent deck. Um, I'm not... Really gonna toot my own horn right away, but uh, it looks fairly okay. 
I'm not too bad, not too disappointed with it. I'm trying to see if I really want the Diabolic Tutor in my deck. Like, other than the Overrun, we don't have, like, any particular bomb or something. Like, if we had, like, Grave Titan or Primeval Titan or some kind of giant monster that would just, like, that is completely game-ending, I'd maybe put that in the deck because we have two targets for it. But I don't want the Diabolic Tutor just to be a second Overrun, um, especially when we can play something like Mind Rot, because I think Mind Rot would be the card I was thinking about substituting for it. Or maybe even the Dark Favor, but I kind of just want to, like, curve out really well. Like, if we just get the Garex Companions and just beat them down with early curves and then Mind Rot them, they'll be in a really tough spot. Um, so I think that that'll probably serve us better than just the Tutor for the Overrun. Um, but I could be wrong. I mean, if I draw the Mind Rot in the late game, where it's like, man, if this was, an over, if this was a Diabolic Tutor for an Overrun, I would have won this game. But I'm going to build it like this first, and then you guys can criticize me afterwards. Um, so, Magic Online says 8 and 8. Reverend mana cost. Oops, color cost. Color sort. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 double black symbols for each of those creatures. So 4 double black cards, 2 double green cards, 1 triple green card. I kind of want to skew this in favor of green just a little bit. The cards that we don't really have to hit right away is Soren's Thirst and, Dev and then the Vampire Outcast. Hopefully by that time we can get double black. Um, Devouring Swarm is, like I said before, is going to be a little bit awkward, but we need to favor hitting our one drops and our grand and our Garrus companions on turn two. Uh, so I think nine seven is a better split. So I'm going to keep it like this and then submit, and I'll join you guys back here for round one. 